Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Rathinata. Today we will be studying the two conditions that we see in single shoe break. Self-locking condition and the second one is the self-energizing conditions. If the, there is no need of the application of external force to apply the brakes and the brakes automatically stops the vehicle of its own this is called as self-locking condition of the single shoe brake and the second condition that is the self-energizing condition what happens is that the moment of the frictional force assist or help the moment of the external force that you apply in this case you don't need to apply that much of force because the frictional force will assist you to apply the brakes these two cases of self-locking and self-energizing are seen in the last two cases of the single shoe brake video that we have last studied right in the third condition we have seen the braking torque force or the braking tangential force is above the fulcrum yes and if you remember the second the last condition is the braking torque force is below the fulcrum in these two condition that is uh, when the braking torque force is above the fulcrum considering the anti-clockwise condition of the drum and in the uh, uh, braking torque force passing below the uh, fulcrum in this uh, in this condition if we consider the clockwise movement of the drum okay if you see we have derived the same expression for these two cases that is um, rn equal to p into l divided by x minus mu a where rn is equal to the reaction force l is the distance of the application of the force from the fulcrum and small x is the distance of the reaction force from the fulcrum and p is the applied force and mu is the coefficient of friction if we take this condition or the expression for these two cases we can actually derive the two conditions that is the self-locking condition and the self-energizing conditions so using this expression that is rn equal to p into l divided by x minus mu a okay the, using this condition or this expression we can find out the uh, condition required for self-locking and the condition for self-energizing we will see in the derivation so for the self-locking uh, your x should be less than equal to mu into a okay and for the self-energizing your your external force p should be greater than zero let's see how we do it hello guys uh, this is the two conditions that we were speaking about the self-locking condition and the uh, self-energizing conditions yeah so in this case if we see if you do remember the two condition your ft uh, that is the uh, tangential uh, uh, force or the tangential braking force above fulcrum okay and your the same ft force uh, below the fulcrum okay in this case we are taking the anti-clockwise movement anti-clockwise movement of the drum and in this case we are taking the clockwise movement of the drum okay we have studied these two cases this one and this one okay the, the two cases in the previous video please uh, go through the pre previous video if you haven't uh, gone through it okay in that video we have discussed the three cases uh, of uh, the tangential braking force passing through the fulcrum passing above the fulcrum and passing below the fulcrum okay and using the last two cases that is uh, ft above the fulcrum and ft below the fulcrum and in these mm, two cases we are taking the anti-clockwise in one case and the clockwise movement of the drum so if you do remember the equation becomes actually rn is equal to p into l by x minus mu into a where a is the distance of the force or the distance of the force applied the, to the fulcrum right yes so using this equation we can actually separate out the uh, external applied force p is equal to rn into x and rn mu a can you see it yeah so what it actually becomes uh yeah you you have the, the thing divided by l is it not yeah so p equal to rn into x or you can write it as rn 
x minus mu a by l. If you see, if this x, okay, if, if, if this x is less than mu a, what will happen? Less than mu, the entire expression will turn negative, okay? And what if this x is equal to mu a? What will happen? The entire expression will become zero. So, p will be either zero or something in negative. Is it not? Are you getting my point? So, if we do maintain that x less than n equal to mu a, if we keep this condition, what will happen? You don't need to, if you remember the diagram, we are applying the force p here. This is our fulcrum point. We used to uh, apply the force at this thing, right? So, you don't need to apply the force p and it will automatically lock with the moving wheel and the uh, brake will be automatically self-locked, right? So, this is one condition, okay? That is the self-locking. And in the self-energizing, we will use the same expression. That is these two cases, using these two cases, as you can see. So, it will be Rn into, but we will just modify little bit, means we will take the equation differently, the same equation, that is x minus mu a. What will happen is that we will keep uh, this Rn into x in one side and p into l, okay, and plus mm, mu r n a. So, what happens when you apply, if you remember, okay, if you remember the thing, we are applying this p force at a distance l from the fulcrum point, if you do remember, right? So, it needs this force into distance, that is the moment of the external force to uh, apply the brakes. But along with it, you can see this is nothing but the moment of friction force. Do you know? Are you getting my point? So, this moment of friction force is assisting the moment of your applied force. So, what happens? You don't need to apply the force that much. If, uh, after that, what will happen? Without applying that much of force, your brake will help in applying the brakes. So, this condition is called as self-energizing. Means, the, the brakes is self-energized to apply the brakes. Okay? And to stop the movement of the wheel. So, for this condition, as you in the previous condition, we have seen that x should be less than mu into a, where mu is your coefficient of friction. In this case, your p should be greater than 0. Okay? For self-energizing, it should be p greater than 0. And for self-locking, it should be x less than equal to mu into a. Okay? If you do remember, a is the distance. Suppose, this is your... Uh, for, uh, this is your wheel, okay, and this is your FT. This is your fulcrum line. This distance was A, if you do remember. Just the distance between the fulcrum and the uh, point of application of the force, that is the FT. Uh, it is not a point of application, but the uh, where the uh, tangential force is happening due to the application, right? Okay, so if you do remember, uh, sorry, if you do use this x equal x less than uh, if you maintain actually x less than in uh, mu into a and p greater than we can actually have these two conditions this first condition and this is the second condition i hope you get the concept of self-locking condition and the self-energizing condition of single shoe brake and thank you so much for being with me for liking sharing and subscribing keep doing so keep subscribe thank you so much once again bye bye